All right, let's take a look at uh, rolling a round object down a ramp. Um, we'll pick a generalized round object where the moment of inertia is given by a constant times mr squared. Um, as you'll see in a bit, for a hoop, um, it would, the constant c would be 1. For a disk, uh, it would be 1 half, the constant c. And for a sphere, solid sphere, the constant c will be 2 fifths. Well, so what we should do first to look at how this thing is going to move is let's draw some forces. Um, so you'd have the weight of the object acting down from its center mass. You'd have a normal force from the ramp that it's rolling on acting perpendicular to the surface or normal to the surface. And then there's going to have to be some kind of a friction acting up the ramp. It's going to be a, a static friction. We'll assume rolling without slipping. And so what we should do now that we've drawn the forces, well, let's pick some axes. Uh, let's choose an x-axis pointing directly down the ramp and a y-axis perpendicular to the ramp. And so what we'll then do is look at the x-direction forces and use Newton's second law, uh, the net force equals ma. Well, so the net force, if you look along the x-direction, is there's going to be a component of gravity that runs along the ramp. I'm showing that here with this yellow, extra yellow arrow that's blinking in and out. Uh, and the value of that would be mg sine theta, where theta would be not only the angle of the ramp of inclination from horizontal, but uh, theta would also be this angle sort of between this normal force and mg. So mg sine theta would project the component that's, um, that's over here opposite this angle, the angle theta that would be here. And then acting in the negative x direction would be the friction force. So you have mg sine theta in positive x, friction force in negative x, and then that's going to be equal to ma. And that's the translation of this object down the ramp. Now what we'll do is look at rotation. Um, let's look at the torques. Well, if we look at the torque about the center of the object, the center of this thing, you'd see that there would only be a torque provided by friction. The normal force extends right through the center of the object, and mg acts at the center of the object. Uh, so there's going to be no torque provided by normal force or mg, but there will be a torque provided by friction, which causes this, this rotation. And so the torque is force times distance, friction force times distance from axis, which would just be the radius. And then that equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Pushing this a little farther, if we're rolling without slipping, our acceleration is just the linear acceleration divided by the radius. Well, so a cool thing happens here. You have r squared over r on the right and r on the left. Well, all the r's will cancel. So it turns out the motion is independent of the radius of the shape. Um, it's just going to, as you'll see later, just depend on this constant that's in front um, here. Um, as yet, it still depends on mass, but we'll, uh, we'll see how this plays out. Well, so if we substitute this value of fs in for the expression above that we got from the x-direction forces, we get this, mg sine theta minus our friction force. So mg sine theta was the force down the ramp minus our friction force equals ma. Well, you notice there's an m in every term. So not only did the radius not matter, but the mass doesn't matter either. And you get this expression involving a. And finally, we can solve for the acceleration by bringing the CA over to the right. So you'd have 1 plus A times C on the right. And then divide by the, um, excuse me, you would have uh, uh, 1 plus C, the quantity of 1 plus C times A on the right. And then div um, dividing by 1 plus C to bring it back over to the left would give you G sine theta divided by 1 plus C equals A as a general result. Well, so let's play around with this a bit and see what we get for different shapes. So we have this general result of the acceleration being g sine theta over 1 plus a constant here that will determine what shape we're talking about. Well, if we're talking about a hoop, c equals 1. Well, so 1, if c equals 1, you'd have 1 plus 1 equals 2 in the denominator. Um, and we'll see later that it'll be g sine theta over 2 will be the acceleration of a hoop. Um, other shapes that we might consider are the disk, where c is 1 half in a solid sphere where C is two-fifths. Well, so let's see how these would play out. Uh, a hoop will have an acceleration of one-half G sine theta, um, because again, if C is one, you'd have G sine theta over two. Uh, if we plug in for a disk, C value of one-half, one plus one-half would be three-halves, 
but then taking the reciprocal of that would give us two thirds. And then finally, we have the fastest shape of the three, the solid sphere, where if you plug in two fifths, you'll get, well, five fifths plus two fifths would be seven fifths, and then taking the reciprocal will give you five sevenths. Um, so here we are in order of, uh, well, coming in last place would be the hoop with an acceleration of only one half g sine theta. Second place would be the disc. Uh, and uh, winning the race will actually be the sphere with an acceleration of five sevenths g sine theta. Completely frictionless object would go sail down this thing with an acceleration of g sine theta. So I hope that helps you, and thanks for watching.